If you've ever traveled extensively, you have inevitably ran into the issue of not being able to receive two-factor authentication codes from your bank or your credit card company or Facebook or any of the applications you normally use in your life. In the US, we don't really think about this because we just get them, right? They text you, you put it in. But if you're in a foreign country, sometimes text messages don't come through or sometimes you have your phone in airplane mode because your carrier wants to charge you you know, $10 a day to have service. And so you're trying to log into your credit card to verify a charge and, you know, you have to take out of airplane mode and your carrier charges you $10. And it's just this whole like headache. If you're living somewhere long term, that's just not a great solution. So what are your options? You either have to port your number out to your a new local carrier wherever you're living. And by the way, that doesn't work. Or you have to get a new number. And that sucks because you spent your adult life with this number it's, you know, everyone who knows you has that phone number, all of your banks, financial institutions have that number, employers, um, you know, friends and family, everyone uses that number. So you don't want to get a new number, especially if you're only going to, you know, live abroad for a year or two. So you want to keep your number, but, but what do you do? What a lot of people do is they just take their, you know, legacy carrier, Verizon, AT&T, whatever, and they just put on the cheapest plan possible and they're still paying like $50 a month to kind of keep their number active, right? That's just not a great long-term solution. So what do we do about this problem? The best way for an expat or, or frequent international traveler to keep their number and to always get two-factor authentication codes and to continue to maintain control over their number without paying tons of fees is to port that number to Google Voice. When I explain this to people, sometimes they don't quite understand how Google Voice works or you know kind of how you make it work. So. I made an entire slideshow presentation to show how this works. So go ahead and check this out and I'll walk you through it. In the US, we have our cell phone carrier that does two things for us. They host our phone number and they provide us with cell phone service. These two things don't have to be the same, but they just kind of are in the US. With our cell phone service, we get a data service and a kind of old school analog voice. We're gonna focus on this data column during this presentation. What I'd like to think about as we move forward is think of your phone number as a car and think of the cell phone service as the gas in the car. So when you move abroad, what happens? As you use your local carrier abroad, they call that international roaming. And if you do that long enough, usually a couple of months, your carrier will cancel your plan. So either you get canceled on or you have to cancel. So why is this a problem? If you get canceled, you have to either port your phone number to a new carrier and international porting doesn't work, or you get assigned a new number when you get your new carrier. And it'll be, you know, for example, I live in Mexico. I don't want a Mexican phone number because, you know, I don't want to use it forever. So that causes an issue because you lose your two-factor authentication, which is like when your bank texts you like, hey, is this really you? You're not going to get that when you're down here and they're not going to let you register a Mexican phone number. <laughs> so you lose that, which is the big hitter here. Your friends lose your number because they can't call you anymore or you don't answer that number and it goes to some lady in Louisiana or whatever. So you want to kind of keep your number. And the other reason is if you need to get a call back from your bank or from a financial institution, they're not going to call an international phone number. So it causes a problem. So how do we keep our solution when we cancel our plan or when we get canceled on? Super simple. We divorce these two things and we port our phone number to Google Voice, which lets us maintain control over the phone number. And then we just get a local carrier in the country we're in and we use the data line. Data lines can power things like VoIP apps. VoIP means voice over internet protocol. Essentially means when you call using these apps, they just use the internet. Google Voice is a VoIP app. So basically to make Google Voice work, you just get a cheap local carrier to give you data or you just use Wi-Fi and your original number will continue to work. So what does Google Voice actually do? Google Voice will host and maintain your phone number for a $20 one-time port fee. And there's no ongoing fees to call and receive messages from the US. The big hitter here is it lets you continue to receive two-factor authentication messages from your bank. As you know, when you log into your bank, it says, hey, we sent a code to here to verify your login. If you're traveling all over the world and you're getting a new number every time you go somewhere, like you are not going to be able to keep updating that. So by paying this one-time 
uh, port fee and hosting your number in Google Voice, it lets the banks and everyone continue to think you still have that number. So it's a great way to solve the two-factor authentication international banking issue. The other nice thing is nobody knows you're using it. So when you call your bank or your bank calls you, they don't know that you're halfway around the world instead of, you know, in the county next to them. So it's a great way to maintain your phone number while you travel the world. So what are some of the limitations? One of the first questions I get when I, when I teach people about this is that they don't really understand that Google Voice does not provide cell phone service. They just host your number. You still have to put gas in the car, right? This is just, they're just the car for your number. But you still got to buy either a, a data package from your local carrier or use Wi-Fi to power it. But it just holds your number. The free tier is only available for U.S. customers. If you're, you know, a lot of my Canadian friends ask about this. If you are a paid Google Workplace subscriber, you can use Google Voice. But the free one is only available for U.S. customers. You can't send high quality media like uh, images, videos, PDFs. It just doesn't work that great. There's no bilateral messaging communication. I think using iMessage and, and WhatsApp and Signal, we're kind of used to seeing the little typing indicators when someone's responding or seeing the delivered check mark when our message gets sent. You don't really get that in Google Voice. It's more like sending smoke signals. So it works, but it's not that great of an app for like daily chit chat. It can be tricky to register a Google Voice number as a two-factor authentication. So we'll talk about that in the next slide. And the last bullet here is you need to sign up while you're still inside the U.S. unless you are tech savvy and know how to use a VPN. If you're an expat and you've already moved abroad, you uh, can still do it if you know how to use a VPN. So here's my two-factor authentication disclaimers. Some sites will not allow you to register a VoIP number. Remember, that's a kind of an internet phone number because I think you might be spammy. Usually they will allow you to call. You can request a call instead of a, a message and Google Voice can accept calls. So you can just answer it, put in the pin code and be on your way. Ultimately, this is only an issue with registering. Once you have the number registered, it will continue to work. So what you gotta know here is you need to set up all your two-factor services before you port your number to Google Voice. So while you are still on Verizon or AT&T or whatever, you want to set up all these, these services with your bank. Because once you port the number, it will continue to work. You just might run into issues with registering a new number. So here's how it works. I want to call somebody in the US. I open the Google Voice app, dial their phone number. It goes out through my data plan or Wi-Fi and rings you know, my bank. They don't even know. If they want to call me, it's just the opposite. They call my number. It goes out through my data plan or Wi-Fi. I answer in the Google Voice app. Nobody's the wiser. One common question I get is, why not just use WhatsApp and FaceTime, Signal, these other VoIP apps that we always use? The answer is these apps do not host your phone number. You still need a phone number because the irony is these apps require a two-factor authentication when you sign up. They say, okay, we sent a text to whatever, verify this is you. So you can't even sign up for these services if you don't have a phone number. The other thing is this does not solve the two-factor authentication banking issue. If you try to log into your bank, they're going to say, we texted you a two-factor authentication. They're not going to say, oh, I sent you a message in WhatsApp. Oh, I sent you a message in Signal. They don't do that. So it still doesn't solve the two-factor authentication banking issue. They can't call landlines or businesses, only other people within the same app. And other people can't just call your phone number unless they're already in the same app. So these kind of work for people you already know or people you already talk to, but they don't work for interfacing with your bank's two-factor authentication system or for calling businesses or landlines. So what do we want in the long term? We want to divorce our phone number from the provider of the, of the uh, data. So we want to host our number in Google Voice and then just get local carriers to provide a data plan to power the apps. Right now in Mexico, I use one of these local carriers and I pay $11 per month for my data plan compared with Verizon that wanted to charge me $10 per day for their data plan. When we ret return home to visit the US, we keep our, our system the exact same. I use one of these prepaid carriers. For example, I use Visible, they're my favorite. I pay $25 per month to use their unlimited data plan and then nobody's the wiser. When we eventually move back home, what do we do? Well, we can keep things exactly the way they are now, 
or we can pay Google Voice $3 to port the number back to whatever our, our legacy carrier is going to be. So this is how I have my phone service set up, and I hope it's helpful for you to see how and why we chose to do it that way. So now you're thinking, okay, great, I get it. That's the solution for me. How do I actually implement this? How do I actually make this happen? Well, lucky for you, we recently had to port one of our numbers into Google Voice, and I recorded the entire process, and it took us four minutes. It is not hard. Check it out. So how do we actually port our number to Google Voice? We go to voice.google.com, go up to the top right-hand corner there, click on Settings, scroll down to Port a Number, click Get Started. You're going to put in your phone number, send code, it will authenticate. Right here it tells you you're successful, you can be ported, sounds good. Right here you're going to put in all of your account information from your existing uh, provider. In our case, this was Verizon. For the porting pin, you have to call them, but for Verizon, at least, it's an automated process and they just texted us that. Make sure this matches your billing statement. Right here, it summarizes it, pops up for a $20 payment through Google Pay. Go ahead and make that payment. Tell us our request was successful. It takes about a day or two. You can go back to settings to track your progress. And for those who are wondering, yes, we did this outside of the United States via a VPN. So yes, it can be done. So now that you've ported your number to Google Voice, as soon as it ports out, your existing cell phone service is going to turn off. So Google Voice does work over Wi-Fi, but you're going to want some sort of local SIM card to power the data plan to run Google Voice and, and your other apps like WhatsApp, you know, Facebook, whatever. So, while it might sound kind of scary to get a SIM card in a foreign country, or you're not sure how to do that, it is super easy. Here, I recorded us walking into Walmart. Walmart in, in Mexico has their own sort of SIM card that you can buy, it's called Byte. You walk right up to this kiosk, get the little card, turn left, go over to the um, service desk, they give you the card, they ask you how much you wanna put on it, there's a bunch of different plans. I bought the 300 peso plan. They just activate it, you take it home, and you put it into your phone. So we're going to take our phone and pop out the old SIM card. It will pop up and say no SIM available. We put in the new SIM card. You have to wait maybe, I don't know, a minute. It will say iPhone is activated. You'll then get a bunch of text messages from your carrier, kind of giving you instructions on how to program the SIM and kind of what your plan details are, things like that. So let's go to the Settings app. We'll go to Cellular Data. Click on that top SIM there that says primary. You probably won't have all these types of SIMs unless you're an active traveler. Right here, you can adjust all of your SIM card settings for this exact line. So you can turn on you know, your voice and data, however you'd like. You can go to the cellular data settings and adjust these. Sometimes those text messages will have some information for how to set these. One setting I like to set is the low data mode. Whenever I go to a new place, I want to kind of reduce my data till I know, you know what my consumption is going to be so I don't run out of data. Now we'll scroll to the bottom of the cellular data tab. Um, I also turn off Wi-Fi Assist, iCloud Drive, and iCloud Backup. Those three can also use a lot of data. So until I know how much data I'm going to use, I turn those off. We go down to Messages. Now that you've ported your your phone number out to Google Voice, your iMessage isn't going to work anymore. So you want to set this as your iMessage email so that people can send and receive iMessages to you at that email address. Last thing we're going to do is go back to the Messages panel, and I'm going to turn off Send as SMS. I don't want to send texts using my kind of temporary local SIM card number. So now that we've got your number ported to Google Voice, if you haven't done it already, now would be a good time to download and sign in to the Google Voice app. Usually it takes about 24 to 48 hours to port your number to Google Voice. It always took me about 24 hours, like exactly 24 hours. So I would expect it to be pretty quick for you too. Keep in mind when you want to get a text or call somebody using your original number, you have to do that through the Google Voice app. I think having your uh, cell phone settings configured like this is the best way for a traveler to keep their number and to be able to keep getting those two-factor authentication codes. Hope this video was helpful. Like and subscribe for more. We'll see you in the next video.